Welcome to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today we're here at the Starmind headquarters and I have the big pleasure to meet with Pascal Kaufmann, who is the co-founder of The Startup. Welcome to The Startup Show. Well, welcome to The Starmind headquarters. Welcome to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today we are here in Zurich, outside, a little bit outside of Zurich. I'm really excited. I am actually using for the first time a new Sony phone for this recording, so I'm excited to see if the quality increases. But today, let's first, as usual, on The Startup Show, Pascal, you get about two minutes to introduce yourself to my audience. Okay. Well, welcome to The Startup Headquarter. Um, my name is Pascal Kaufmann. I'm a neuroscientist. And today, I'm the co-founder of Starmind, together with Mark von Tobel. And I'm interested in high-tech and I would love to think with the power of thousand brains at the same time. That's actually the vision of Starmind. Let's first try to understand artificial intelligence as you know it. So maybe can you explain what excites you so much about, about artificial intelligence? Well, artificial intelligence is a huge hype. And since thousands of years, people wanted to build like AI to understand the brain, to crack the brain code. It was even Prometheus, the guy that uh, stole the fire of Zeus, that uh, actually created intelligence by giving the fire to man. So AI is really very poorly understood. It's a mystery. No one really understands what AI is because we have no clue what actually intelligence is. So it's a huge, huge uh, misconception on, and a misunderstanding about what AI really is. So what, what do you see, let's say, when you are very much involved into academia, what do you see the trends in AI as you understand it? Yeah, so 95% of all brain researchers, of all like scientists or engineers have the impression that the brain is like a fast computer. It's the same conceptual mistake that we commit for hundreds of years just to take the most impressive thing we have, like back in the days there were like pumps and wheels and levers, today it's computers. I think the brain is not a fast computer. The brain could be a superorganism constituted by many, many brain cells. And brain cells are a little bit like living organisms. And it's actually more like a superorganism, in my view. <laughs> okay, interesting. So let's talk a bit about StarMind, the company you founded. Maybe you can give us a little bit an introduction of StarMind and what's it all about. Well, StarMind in a nutshell, um, we believe that in a world where AI takes over, where machines take over, a lot of people lose their jobs, right? So the people that remain in the companies that become really, really important because obviously you cannot automatize these, these guys. So what we are doing at StarMind, we are connecting thousands of brains in large corporations and we create kind of a corporate brain. So ultimately you can take your mobile device, you can tell your corporate browser, you can just ask any type of question to that corporate brain constituted by many, many, many employees. And uh, we have like uh, solution rates of questions of up to 98%. So when you're an employee facing a tough question, when you meet the client or when you do like some research, you can ask a question to the star mind corporate brain and within seconds the question is just like solved. And I think if you connect thousand human brains in a smart way, you can outsmart any time any kind of machine these days. This is what we are doing. We are connecting human brains and we build like corporate brains to outsmart machines. Right. So, so that sounds very interesting, but also a little bit uh, abstract. Maybe you can give us an example of one of your clients, obviously without mentioning a name, to understand like, how that looks like, let's say, within a company. Well, take one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. You um, have now a tough problem. You need to uh, know a special formula. So what you can do, you could actually study for weeks like books and research papers, or you just turn to that huge corporate brain within that large pharmaceutical company and you ask a question. And by typing the question into your browser or into, onto your mobile, it actually says, stop, 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 someone else has already faced a similar question, do you mean this question? And they say, yes, and then instantly you have already a solution. Assume you are the first facing that problem and no one else has ever asked that problem. You actually ask the question to that brain and then the brain figures out who is right now online within that large pharmaceutical company who could instantly solve that question at hand. So it might be three people. And those three people are selected based on their skills, on their willingness to share know-how, on their availability, and then you actually can solve that uh, relatively fast. Mm -hmm. And this is how Starman is used on a daily work. You do not need to solve your problems on your own. You just have to formulate the right question. Right, right. I remember also there's this, this huge experiment when you use the masses, they usually guess the right uh, 
amount of, let's say, measurement when everyone has to guess. The mm-hmm. wisdom of the masses yeah, or of the wisdom, crowd. Yes, yeah? yes. I actually don't believe in the wisdom of the crowd because <laughs> when you have a cow in front of you and you ask like 100 farmers what's the weight of this cow, of course you get a very fine, like uh, you actually are very precise then. But innovation, new things are often done by individual talents. Yeah. So StarMind singles out smart people, hidden champions that can tackle questions. Right. So let's talk about artificial intelligence. Where do you see, let's say, the trends in terms of, I don't know, artificial intelligence? You said like machines are taking over our jobs. Are we going towards a world with machines only that will take over basically everything we do? Well, first of all, when you need 300 million pictures of cats in order to say it's a cat or a horse or a cow, to me, that's not artificial intelligence. It's just like big data and deep learning and brute force approaches. So these masses of data have nothing got to do with intelligence. So whenever you read about AI insight, it's actually often like, like brute force uh, statistics that they are doing. So when you look at that, there are tremendous things you can automatize because a lot of things are based on data. But the true AI, that you can have a robot here that you cannot distinguish from like the biological Pascal Kaufman, this will um, take some more time because you first need to understand the principle of the brain. Mm -hmm. And I think if you are doing research in the wrong places, you will never get there. Right. So where are we standing with the research of the brain? I think uh, it's it's the same problem that uh, science faced a few hundred years ago when they wanted to build like artificial birds. So scientists dissected the birds and they figured out there were like wings and stuff. So you maybe know about those like pictures from history books that they built as wooden machines that never took off, right? Today, the neuroscientists committed the same mistake. But they look at the brain, they figure out like 100 billions of brain cells and they want to build those artificial brains. I mean, they horribly failed, right? And um, it was Leonardo da Vinci who figured out that actually when you like to create an artificial bird, just the, the shape of the profile of the wing is irrelevant. So I think too few scientists these days focus on the principles of the brain. Many of them want to rebuild or copy paste the human brain. They will horribly fail. Mm-hmm. So we believe you can't build an artificial brain. You need to extract the principles of the brain. And this, I think, unfortunately, not too many scientists are working on that. Working on that or understand, I guess. Yeah, because it's a big mystery. No one knows how the brain works. And uh, it's definitely not deep learning. It's definitely not a fast computer. It's something else. Right. So, you know, like one of the last questions that I usually ask is more into entrepreneurship. And I would like to understand what are, let's say, your key advices when you start your own company for all the students out there who are watching this show? Well, if you like to build your own startup, you really need to believe in what you are doing, what you're selling, because you dedicate a high portion of your life to that idea. If it is a boring idea, if it is a stupid idea, you're just wasting your time. So please be very clear. Would you like to do that for many, many years? And if you say yes, then go for it. Good. I think that's a great ending for this startup show. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you very much, Pascal, for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon with a new episode. Have a great day. Bye-bye.